well this is what i'm looking at to my left this is straight ahead that's the guy i was following uh, his license plate says uh, ontario and our escort the guy was in that white uh, pickup truck i don't know chevy or i think it was a chevy or gmc same thing uh, we were following him and he just left us here and he's sitting there on the left side and i see everything is happening at the at the end of that road in the distance there's uh there's a kenworth i can see the emblem on the radiator black i think black or dark blue k whopper w900 with a flatbed similar to this one with a rolling tarp i'm guessing they pick up so they we're all picking up the same uh, parts for the same uh, crane and so my piece is going to be a monster and to my right is a nice little private dumpster you can never go wrong with that and they created roads here you know these dirt roads and i guess because all these uh, blades you know they were shipping these blades in right so that's what they use this crane for they use it to uh, to uh to rig this huge towers and they look very big when you're next to them and so trucks big trucks were were bringing in you know the blades and then parts of the of the tower that's why these uh, they're so expensive and lots of people hate them i don't know like everybody seems to be making money right so farmers are making a killing on uh, land lease or land rental not sure what everybody's complaining about and these pay usually good you know and so you have to bring these uh, pieces in but of course first of all you have to bring the equipment in like the the wheel loaders and the cranes and stuff like that even sometimes they use helicopters uh, and so it's more work for for guy, guys like me right so i'm not complaining um but i've been talking i've been driving and talking to a couple of other guys that uh, know a thing or two about heavy loads and one guy says uh i said what about the shim like you know the shim and the deck right i still have to buy those wrenches And one guy says, how long is your load? I said, well, they say it's 24, 24 feet. And he says, oh, then don't worry about it. He says, if it's 24, so it's all spread out, uh, you can keep your, I told him I have the medium shim, right? Like my Fontaine in the deck, I have three sizes of uh, shims I can use and they all color coded. But actually now you cannot see the color anymore. It's all faded, but originally the smallest one was yellow i believe it was one eighth of an inch then the next uh in size up was blue i believe that one was a quarter of an inch and then the biggest one is red um danger and that one is i think it's half an inch or maybe no half an inch that's that seems too much hold on I'll try to remember uh, because I was measuring this half an inch one yeah it can be half an inch yeah half an inch and then uh, uh, one fourth and one eighth and so this guy says no don't worry about it uh, because it's 24 feet and he says uh, how tall is the load they said uh, uh, only 10 feet and he says oh then you can what you can do he says if you don't want to change the shim or well, actually you don't have to he says just raise the front of the trailer because your height is not that bad right so you can raise it like a foot if you want to and when you raise the front that basically uh, pushes more into the rear axle well like axle two on the trailer so it's kind of like you uh, compensate for that uh, shim 
for the smaller shim, right? So that's what this guy said. And I said, what about the shims in front of the booster? Shall I uh, use the same uh, three shims I used before with the 100,000 pound load? Uh, because if, as you remember, my uh, the way my booster is misdesigned or ill-designed, there's like a one inch gap between the trailer and and the uh, and the frame of the booster and so i used uh, uh three shims half an inch each because two of them are just covering the gap right and then basically it's like half an inch shim what is like net net shimming amount and that way was perfect for up to hundred thousand pounds and that was the biggest load i tried with this two plus two and that's what i have now right and so um and this guy says, oh, well, you should be okay. But he says, if you want to, maybe add another one-eighth of an inch. And so we'll see. We'll see. I'm not sure if, I, if I'll if i be allowed to film there. It's probably going to be very hectic. Oh, yeah. And so when I called, uh, the guy asked me to, my contact says, when you reach a certain crossroad on this Illinois 49, he says, stop there and call me and I'll send the guy to escort you to the site. And the site is like, you know, 15 minutes away from, from Illinois 49. And so when I called him, I was asking about shims. I said, hey, guys, it just occurred to me that, you know, you dismantled this huge crane. So you guys probably should have all kinds of tools. I said, I know this is not something that it's, it's not your problem. But I said, uh, I'm thinking I, I need to change the shim in the deck, you know. Oh, and the, so the first guy says, um, the, my first expert, house expert says, yeah, don't worry about the shims, it's 24 feet long, it's fine with the medium session. But then I talked to another guy who deals with much heavier loads, um, like he does 12, 13, 15 axles, now he's moving something like 20 feet tall. He does crazy stuff and he says, no, it does not matter, he says, even if it's 24, because it's so heavy, I told him, 120,000 pounds. He says, if I were you, I would change the shim. I would I would put in the, the, the big shim. But then, of course, you have to get it out. And I said, how do you do this? Like, what kind of wrenches do you carry? Because I know he's changing these shims in the deck all the time. And he says, oh, the secret is, he says, uh, um, never tighten them too much. You just basically slightly tighten them because it doesn't matter they don't have to be tight the entire trailer when it's under load it sits on that big eye and the pin like there's a horizontal eye there and the pin and so these uh, bolts are pretty much just for security oh the guy's waving to us i think we can go both of us or just one guy me too shall i follow him go go okay okay he says go all right well it's uh three o'clock uh my time so it's two o'clock here so i've been here since what since uh, 10. Uh, but you guys were nice you know they helped me change the shims and all they used was they used the uh, one plumbing uh, adjustable wrench and the other one like just adjustable a regular wrench and we put some never seize on it uh, my only concern is that the way it, it's sitting now like the big circular thing is pretty much in the middle of the trailer so I'm afraid it's going to have too much weight on the back there, but you know, it sits at an angle, so angle helps to push the weight forward. So I hope that's why I don't want the, the front to be too tall, right? So the taller the rear is, you know, the taller the rear is, if it sits like this, it'll push more weight forward, right? Which I, which what I need. But the problem with this thing is, so yeah, it can fit. The problem is that it's all sheet metal underneath. You know in the back there so the front has to sit on the circular ring which basically rotates the the house of the crane right so that's okay that's easy right first we tried it in the back it would it was too big for the back because the frame there is narrow okay we we turn it it sits in the front 
and they don't want to disconnect the um, the catwalk in the front then I we could have moved it two three two feet forward but the problem is that in the back the only way where it can sit is where those legs are they call them the, the feet where the feet are because where those feet are there's a big hydraulic uh, cylinder and that's the only way you can load this which of course makes it pretty difficult for for uh, you know for trucking and I see they brought some uh, timbers because yeah we use some softwood timbers over there on my bolster uh, it just you know it's not my fault that this thing ha has only two spots in the back where to where to load it you know and I was told it's 24 feet long well it's my Jeep over here my truck is over there and we changed the shims and uh, the neck has been flipped so the only problem is my broker told me I was picking up a piece 24 feet long 10 wide and 10 tall and turns out this piece is 48 feet long and uh, and I said why did you tell me 24 he says well in the whale all you need in the whale is 24 and you must bring uh, like blockings to block it up but <laughs> this thing has uh, it has legs in the front so you can only uh, basically you can only put your timbers in certain spots uh, so you can only put them in the front there where those uh, welded legs are and then it, over here where this big uh, circle is and so we try to put it over there it's too narrow and uh, you can probably see how this thing is leaning towards me so this side is much heavier than the other side and of course I have I have the I have the Jeep and I have a four axle truck in the front so I have six axles in the front but only four in the back and that's another reason why I want to have three plus two you know uh, because this happens all the time where you load it's not centered you know like you can see how this piece you see how it's hanging like this side is definitely much heavier than the other side so so I just don't want to go home hopefully this will work so the loading guys uh, really started to lose patience uh, at the end um, <laughs> you know because it, it's all fine and dandy when it's like 11 12 o'clock right but when they see that it's the beer time is uh, rolling over quite soon they get really impatient and basically started kicking me out okay come on you can finish the rest over there how many chains do you have I said four on 120,000 piece and I asked the crane guy because the crane guy right it's it's like a 300,000 no 300 yeah it can do like 720,000 pounds it's like 300 uh, metric tons or thousand metric 300 anyway so it's 720,000 pounds so that crane that was loading me can do six of these at the same time like I doubt that it didn't look that strong but anyway that guy has a gauge right he can see exactly the weight and I asked him you know when he they put it down I said sir would you mind telling me the weight what your gauge uh, showed and the guy says oh actually I didn't even look like you're lifting a hundred twenty thousand pound piece and you don't look at your gauge you know and then they were telling the crane guy was telling me oh American junk oh this is junk why are you so long look how long you are this is BS you know you should buy a European trailer you know short seven eight axles in the back all turning beautiful I said really okay I said first off that trailer cost like half a million bucks secondly you bring that trailer here you will get zero weight on it I said you need this you need this big spreader but I try to explain to him but you know he sounds by his accent he sounds like he's from Europe oh no, that's American you know to the garbage this is I said this is not garbage I said the rules are in the States and Canada different but anyway it's like useless to talk to them and like I said uh, I'm gonna show you now in a second but uh, look at me I'm like exhausted you know and I, I only have four chains on so I have to finish chaining but at least uh, the airbags look okay in the back so I'm gonna show you in a second but now I want to change out of these super heavy ugly boots you know 
everything is wet so i need new i need new t-shirt i need new shorts and i need uh, i'm gonna put on the sneakers but but anyway the last straw that broke uh, the camel's back or in this case uh, where the guy lost patience is because I didn't have those huge timbers that they needed to put in on the last uh, axle bolster again it's not my fault right the guy told me it was 24 feet long 24 feet would fit straight on the deck right and they did say uh, bring a bunch of 8 by 8 blocks I'm like wait a second if this piece is 24 feet long I'm gonna just bring my regular timbers you know my outrigger boards and that's what I did and so that's when they were starting losing patience you know oh we need the uh, big big um, blocks in here uh and then after like 10 15 minutes they said okay if you uh, cannot find them like 15 20 minutes we will have to unload you and uh load it on somebody else because we have two trucks sitting here or well, three trucks yeah three trucks sitting there and there was one guy behind me the guy that's loading a car body as it's called that one is so much simpler you know it's much shorter it's basically it's the piece of the frame that goes under this like this is where the operator sits and it's like 46 feet long again i'm gonna show you in a second but anyway so the guy in the pickup truck says i said why can't we use one of these huge ties you know you have these ties all over the place oh we don't have a saw and then uh he came back like 10 minutes later and he threw on some old ragged um, timbers and they're like 12 by 12 and and they so they told me to move out and i i couldn't even wait till my airbags were full of air and i'm like i started driving in, in low gear and i'm thinking i'm gonna hear some kind of a crack and this whole thing is gonna fall down on my wheels and then i stop here i think i'm gonna sleep here i'm like i'm so exhausted and it's pretty tricky getting out of here like you have to do so many turns to get back to uh, 49 but anyway but here they have this little loop right uh, that's where you know when you have a super long trailer instead of taking that turn like these guys did because they just have a 48 foot flatbed right but if you have a long trailer you go like this you know like when you uh, I guess guys that bring the blades and the and the body of the tower they would go like this and this gives you much more room and so i just pulled in here it's the end of friday and then look at this what's to my left to my left is a garbage can full of timbers of all sizes right and the loader just brought those back in here like you know but they, they don't care right so it, oh you have to have timbers you don't have timbers we'll find somebody else and it's and by the way and that's another thing why you never want to order permits beforehand you know so illinois and india uh, illinois and michigan are issued so i can drive in illinois i'll probably just sit down here sit here and uh um because you know i i cannot drive right now i, I i'm super tired you know they say when you're tired it's the same as uh, drunk driving i can't fathom now all these 20 freaking turns to get back to 49 so i'm gonna sit down here change into good clothes and uh, regroup and i didn't even order yet the ontario permit uh, but this is already useless it's uh, 4 20 p.m right now on friday <laughs> that one might can take a week but you know at least uh, i can start moving from here because from here it's about uh, 400 miles to the border you know so basically i'm pretty sure illinois allows me to drive on the weekend right and oh i don't have indiana so all i can do now is i can hook up all my chains uh i i i, I grab them from my compartment and put them on the deck and basically finish uh chaining today and maybe i'll do like the draft for the ontario permit but what's the point of sending it it's uh, nobody's gonna be in the office there until monday now but yeah, i was too hectic too hectic but what i'm saying is that why quite often it's it's a waste of money to order permits because you see i cannot move anyway because indiana is not issued even though i have michigan so might as well order them on monday 
you know so all i can do now tomorrow is illinois and illinois i think it's uh 100 170 miles or something on my permit i saw that so it's like 200 200 miles that's all i can do tomorrow because then there's that's uh, indiana and i have to stop there because i don't have the indiana permit and the guys were like oh geez what kind of trailer is this uh, why is it so short you know because they have no clue uh, why is it so short or oh, it's you should need a you need a european trailer that's the crane guy that but then the boss who was in charge of uh, like the um, what do you call him? like the supervisor who was you know talking to the crane operator like who was in charge of actual loading oh you know when when they brought this it was a flat trailer uh i said step deck or flatbed oh uh, <laughs> he doesn't know i said this tall or this tall you know like uh, uh, to your knee knee tall or chest tall oh uh, it was like this to my waist and he's like freaking seven feet tall big guy so he does not know but he says it was a, a flat trailer and we just loaded this and on the entire trailer and it had uh, four or five axles and I said, if this thing is really 120,000 pounds, which I a bit, you know, doubt, I'm doubtful about, but if it's really 120,000 pounds, you need at least nine axles. So if you have a four axle truck, uh, you need a five axle uh, trailer. And actually they have these, they have these, uh, you know, like a multi-axle flatbeds. They have three in the back and then uh, one axle one lift axle like 10 feet forward and then another axle 10 feet forward they use them to move like long heavy pieces actually i was thinking of buying one of those instead of this but that's not a typical trailer for this right again i was told this was 24 feet long and this guy said well that's not uh, our problem that's between you and the agent okay and the agent so far didn't even say uh, he's sorry or not sorry. He didn't say anything. He just sent me a he sends me a, uh, he sent me a load confirmation for the second load. Uh, do we need a, a, a new parse, a new sticker for the second load? I said, wait, I'm like freaking half a mile away from the crane. I don't even have my chains on this one. Let me deliver this without getting killed or arrested. And then we'll talk about the pass for the second load. Jesus. Well, I just talked to the guy sitting in a pickup truck. I said, hey, how do I get out of here? And he says, are you ready? I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I'm here to escort you. I said, oh, actually, I'm not going anywhere. I said, I'm staying here. He says, oh, no, you cannot stay here. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, well, there's a rule that there's, there's no overnight parking uh so basically yeah we changed uh took them uh, probably an hour see now i have those uh red shims in and those definitely made a big difference but you see now it's not too low uh it supports it raised the trailer and now actually the front i raised the front because uh, the road is so uneven uh but you see this one is a bit has less is a bit taller than than this one and then these ones are a bit shorter but not by much but i think it's okay and i raise this you see it cannot touch that's what they say and that's the problem see this this whole thing the only place where you can hook up is this because it has the hydraulic like who designs cranes like this right and that's what they were looking for and now there's a whole bin of these over there not sure what the problem was i see i should have put in maybe another one but actually yeah you see even with three shims those are my standard shims right even with three shims i have lots of weight on the back there i can actually i can probably now you see it's pretty close here and there just the front is a bit i don't like that the front is a bit uh, taller it's because you know all this you know when i had that rock truck at least the weight was sitting here and i just don't like it that all this weight sits here but this is a very strong part it's all reinforced you know 
but <laughs> I'd hope it uh, it'll survive this load and uh, it's not gonna heat in there I don't think but yeah that's what it is now look at these uh, super sharp rocks you know wow anyway so the guy's waiting he says yeah you have to get off off this site get to highway 49 and i asked the guys i said so what's the you know i always ask the people you know what's the good way to chain it down it's not our crane that's what this guy says it's not our crane just uh, please leave because we have 20 trucks you know five trucks but i'm guessing there's uh there's a deering in there so i'll have to climb in there somehow and again you see because this sits like this i have no deerings in here anywhere i probably i'll have to use this one somehow you know normally like i don't want to raise it but it's it's super tight in there so this whole thing sits on that right so if i hook up this load to this it'll push in this into this so it, it cannot go anywhere right because there's three shims so i have to do it i cannot just drive with four chains with so much weight and you see and that that was the problem like how can this be 24 feet long right <laughs> brokers you know and i asked him i said can you guys remove this can you maybe remove this because this you can unbolt and this would go sideways here and then we can move it two feet forward but then the problem is you know over here it's four feet right like the only way to sit this is on this right like i said so this would have to be here right and that's much longer than that catwalk and so if we remove the catwalk this part would be somewhere here and i said what if we put the the board in here he says no all this is all sheet metal you know like what kind of a setup is this it's crazy and that's why i always say i keep saying recently that that's why you need one more axle in the back here you know because that's why you don't see too many of these uh two by twos is because of this because load like this and you see where this sits this sits in the middle of the trailer so so basically a lot of weight goes in there but at least it's at an angle so i hope there is some weight here but i see from the gauges that i don't have that much weight on the truck and the jeep which is uh, so like i said i just hope to be able to deliver without without any problems i have some pictures over here if everything looks more or less okay but as i was turning from this dirt road onto highway this is what happened 